Just an FYI, uh, this video is going to focus on Borderlands 3, the game alone, rather than all the peripheral bullshit that's happened around the game. If you've even been, like, aware of the, uh, uh, even just some of, like, the games industry shenanigans that have been going around with this game, then you know why that is, because there's so much bullshit that's happening around the game and i kind of just want this video to focus on the game itself to see if borderlands 3 stands on its own merits or if it's propped up by everything else that's going around it so i'm gonna be doing a separate video on all the bullshit so i can at least document uh on this channel like all that's happened with it because it's a lot <laughs> um but yeah enjoy the review Borderlands 3 is like a tube of plain Pringles. It's like eating air. It's fine, albeit a bit of a letdown. Borderlands was one of the most innovative series of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era generation, and Borderlands 2 is considered by me to be one of the best first-person shooters of its era. The game, as well as the rest of the series, is mayhemic, fun, and just really, really addicting. However, we are in the year 2019, not 2012 like when Borderlands 2 came out, or even 2014, which was when Borderlands the pre-sequel came out, which was developed by 2K Australia. In other words, the newly released Borderlands 3 is the first Gearbox Borderlands game developed in-house in over seven years. And that age kind of shows. Nearly every aspect of the groundbreaking, addicting looter-shooter gameplay has been copied into both offline and live service online games. Think like The Division 2, Anthem, Destiny, you name it. And even though the quality is very rarely ever matched, I was hoping for some new innovations to the Borderlands formula in Borderlands 3, just to shake things up a bit. After all, some additions to the gameplay could have gone a long ways into making Borderlands 3 an even bigger and better game. But sadly, that's not what Borderlands 3 is, which is completely serviceable. It's okay. It gets the job done. It's fine. It's fine. The plot of Borderlands 3 follows uh, whatever hero character you decide to go with. Uh, you know how it is, class-based gameplay. Your hero character has their own upgradable skill trees and such. I admittedly picked Moe's, whose special ability summons a pilotable mech. Hey, if a game focuses on guns, 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 I'm gonna pick a character that focuses on guns, guns, guns. Whatever character you choose, your character is a vault hunter looking to score some loot. A goal that eventually gets derailed by Lilith and the Crimson Raiders, who recruit you to fight a new Borderlands foil in the Calypso Twins. The Calypso Twins, who, like every Borderlands villain, has amassed a massive following, though this time through Space YouTube and Galactic Twitch. And similar to actual YouTube and Twitch personalities, they're very vain and violently idiotic. <clears throat> uh, no comment. Like all previous Borderlands villains, the Calypso twins want to open a vault, and it's up to your character, as well as the Crimson Raiders, some familiar characters, and some new characters to stop them. All pretty standard fare, all things considered. Borderlands is mostly known for its witty writing, more so than its overall plot structure. Which is why it's so surprising that Borderlands 3 is so horribly written. Where Borderlands 2, for the most part, had a great sense of humor, Borderlands 3's writing couldn't be more grating if it came with prepackaged moldy cheese. The characters, even the iconic Claptrap who was originally designed to walk the line between funny and annoying, are unrelentingly irritating. Yo! Little help? Fuck you, underwear dude! Any laughter caused by this game, or any charm within the title, is few and far between, even with fan-favorite characters like Lilith or Zero. The bad writing also highlights another problem that other, uh, Borderlands games have been able to get away from, and that's the fact that whoever your character is, whoever you choose to be, is just an errand boy or errand girl, stranded to the sideline of the actual plot. Other Borderlands games made up for the lack of player agency by letting the player be voyeurs in a humorous and charmingly juvenile mad world. 
but Borderlands 3's writing is so notably bereft of good jokes and funny segments that it highlights the game's lack of player agency in the narrative. As a result, there's no real engagement with the story as we're all stranded to watch horrible cutscenes that are terribly written and they're just painfully not funny. Like, painfully. It's painfully bad. You just want to skip it and let it end. Put it out of its misery. Even the villains, the Calypso twins, aren't very interesting as Gearbox really tries to outdo Handsome Jack. And, well, you can't outdo Handsome Jack. The YouTube Twitch livestream angle of the Calypso Twins is a neat touch, sure, but the game's writing isn't really smart enough to go anywhere interesting with it. The gameplay will be the only aspect of this game that'll keep players coming back. The core, frenetic, energetic first-person shooter gameplay is admittedly still great. The game controls terrifically. Shooting bandits and other baddies into meat chunks with your arsenal of weapons is a riot. Leveling up skills on the skill tree is a blast, and the action is balls to the wall. Really helping the action set itself apart from the rest of its contemporaries is the amazing loot system. There are so many different types of weapons with alternative fires and elemental damage and randomized loot drops that Borderlands 3 can be very addicting in short spurts. Looting chests and such are still a thrill. Each box type has a its own satisfying animation and sound that makes Borderlands 3 borderline arousing. I've been really trying, was it as good for you as it was for me? However, Borderlands 3's fun core gameplay can only do so much, save for new types of lootables and over 1 billion guns. The Borderlands gameplay formula remains unchanged, which is very unfortunate. As stated before, unlike Borderlands 2, Borderlands 3 isn't the only looter shooter in town. While it is better than, say, this year's Rage 2 and Anthem, God, I will make everyone remember that I played Anthem through its entirety. It is awful. My 4 out of 10 I gave that game, back when I was at The Escapist, was so damn generous. While Borderlands 3 is better than this year's Rage 2 and is much better than Anthem, Borderlands 3 suffers from an unwillingness to innovate. To start a dodge mechanic or a dash mechanic would have been cool, especially considering that a lot of times the enemy AI loves to do like a Benny Hill and run around boxes away from where you're trying to kill them. Just let me shoot you in peace, damn it! The grapple system to climb up walls would have been so much better if you just only held A rather than press A whenever you're near a ledge. Even worse, the inventory management system sucks. It takes a while to unlock more weapon slots to equip weapons and the inventory cap is small, even when you eventually upgrade it. For a game that promotes itself for its loot, uh, the limiting backpack storage space where you put weapons, or the fact that you're at the start of the game can only equip two weapons at a time, really limits uh, what kind of experimentation you want to do with all these weapons that the game showers the player with. Like, the game will give you all these toys to play with, but seeing as you're only allowed to have only so many at such amount of time, you can't play with the toys that it keeps tossing at you. Let me play with your stuff, game. Let me play it. <laughs> this was a problem in Borderlands 2, and it's very disappointing to me that it continues in Borderlands 3. Just disappointing be honest. I don't care if the weapon cap is due to split screen or the co-op, which is fun. Don't get me wrong, it is fun. But, like, why? Why would you shoot yourself in the foot so much? I know that you're gearbox, but still. Such a stingy weapon cap limits the fun and any sort of experimentation you want to do. And you want to experiment with these guns. It's like college all over again. You just want to you know, just use guns that turn into grenade launchers that just do all their really cool stuff, like wrist-mounted pistols and stuff. Like, there's some really cool stuff. And, you know, a lot of people will miss some of that stuff because they're not given space to experiment with them, which sucks. They should be able to. I was legitimately hoping for more. Other aspects of the game are just window dressing. You may travel to new planets, aside from the series mainstay Pandora, but they aren't very different or varied. The art style and the way they play is 
basically all the same. The vehicles are terrible, they control like ass. And also, rage-inducingly enough, there are some game-breaking bugs that can cause you to have to reboot the game because certain side characters brick to do some sort of game-breaking bug. God damn it! Really damn irritating and kept me from actually completing the game. Side note, I know that it's bad practice to uh, review a game before you even finish it, but I'm at level 26 now, and my opinion of the game hasn't really changed since level 1. And this game is long. It is very long. And the writing throughout its lengthy runtime is terrible. I just don't have the time or even the willpower to immediately go back into Gearbox's and 2K's latest installment of their ever-beloved looter shooter franchise. As I stated in the beginning, Borderlands 3 is like eating plain factory made potato chips. It's good as filler due to its commitment to the established gameplay formula, which is fun, and unwillingness to innovate, which admittedly is enough to get that desperate financial and critical win that Gearbox needs, but not enough to be a true quality game. Hopefully in the next Borderlands, if there is one, Gearbox will decide to innovate rather than rest on its laurels. See ya.